Another commentary done by Diggity. This time it's going to be out in the community, Upper in Glenway of Steve Young, which you can check out on Twitch TV, Steve Young SC. He's an outspoken caster who is always well-dressed. Lee Rack is starting in the bottom left hand corner as the Green Zerg. Lee Rack, I think, are, I don't even know, arguably, absolutely everybody's favorite Artosis admin. Makes me jealous. I know that Steve was upset in this matchup for some reason. Just a single wheel and got Naga. Um, we'll see what is going... I know that Steve was overall upset by this series of matches. Not sure what's going on with the... the... Okay, never mind. Steve Young gives GG game one. So game one goes to Lee Rack. <clears throat> Looks like it might be a uh, fast series. I will move on to game two momentarily. Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right hand corner, we have Steve Young from Steve Young SE on Twitch. Lee Rack starting the bottom right hand corner uh, from Lee Rack on Twitch. Actually, I think they're behind Artosis. It's like Artosis, uh, which was way up there in the StarCraft casting uh, or in the StarCraft Twitch space. Then like Gypsy and Jayun tend to be top, and then Steve and Lee Rack tend to be the top streamers after that. Steve, outspoken, uh, entertaining. And Goofy, this is going to be on Circuit Breaker, which I have not seen in... Never mind, Steve giving GG number two. Interesting. Okay, so that's two GGs we got uh, right off the bat. I think this is a best of three. So Steve... Mm. <laughs> Steve losing the two games right off the bat. All right, let's move on. Hey guys, tentatively, this is game three between <laughs> Steve Young of Steve Young SC on Twitch. Starting the upper right hand corner is the white Protoss versus Lee Rack, upper left hand corner. <laughs> That's the green Zerg. This is on Polypoid. Is it on Polypoid? Yes, it's on Polypoid. And I can only assume because when I came in to discover that this game had been played, Steve Young was a bit upset with chat. So I'm wondering if his chat did something in the background and I almost kind of felt like the fatherly influence coming in. Got a lot of dad energy coming in and going like, okay, uh, <laughs> why why is Steve so upset? What did you do, chat? And there was a lot of uh, haranguing and things going on. So I'm wondering if something happened game one, game two. Anyway, Steve opting for Protoss. Usually he is a Terran player. Maybe he went random here, dropping a pylon at the natural expansion. Let's see if he opens up with gateway first. Lirak tends to... It's a very popular stream. Mostly, if you want to watch the most entertaining stuff he does, oftentimes he'll join in free-for-alls, things along those lines, where honestly, I, I doubt he's trying to win. It feels like more often than what he's trying to do is be frustrating, which oftentimes involves going Terran and dropping nukes on absolutely everybody. It's quite entertaining. And also, uh, I think Lirak, also known for the Monka T, spamming a lot of Monka T emotes and Oscar the Grouch uh, stuff. I think it's Oscar the Grouch <clears throat> inside the trash can stuff going on. Looks like it is going to be a gateway first. I'm, I'm honestly jealous of Lirak's popularity inside the, the Artosis mod community. They seem to love him, regardless of his uh, prison world status. Anyway, looks like we are seeing Overpool from Lirak. First scout from Steve to the upper left-hand corner, so he is going to come across this base. I'm going to say between the two, I do believe that Steve's MMR is way higher than Lirak. Lirak is, uh, yeah, and Sva is actually in the background Twitch chat where it's like Lirak is absolutely the, the Twitch mod fan favorite and Sva he feels is the least favorite. Maybe it's his policy towards Ayaya. I'm pro Ayaya. <clears throat> and I know that tends to be war within the Artosis chat world altogether. Steve gonna wander up, try to block that natural expansion. Mix it up with that drone. Looks like he's gonna have some success in doing so. No Zerglings being produced as of yet. Instead, well, nope, not able to get it down. So a decent blockade. The drone is gonna be able to scout towards that upper right, and actually not bothering. So yeah, four Zerglings being produced. The probe still holding Stalwart, blocking that. A Forge being dropped as a follow-up. So recognizing that Zerglings might be on the way, and that drone gonna be able to sneak through otherwise to confirm everything else in between. The probe actually backing off. What looks like that hatchery did manage to land. Four Zerglings out. Additional slew of Zerglings being built to go up to an eight count. Steve needs to be a little bit where So still going after that drone. He's going to end up sacrificing his probe. Ugh. Come on, probe. No. Probe gets wiped out, which actually puts maybe Steve into danger town. That hatchery was pretty delayed. The zealot is up here, but he's way outnumbered. 
that's a sufficient Zerglings to obliterate him. He's going to try to make it to that back line. A second Zealot marching out. And actually, Steve playing this very risky. First of all, delaying that natural expansion quite a bit. But secondarily, with these Hellas out in the field, he doesn't have any defenses out on his main. Drone's still hanging out there in No Man's Land. Now a Photon Cannon being dropped. But is that cannon going to be in time? If the Well, the Zergling's not going to press that front door otherwise. The Zealot also making its way back. And this Zealot's just going to have to hang out and watch Drone's mining. Zealots do not have the range to do extra fun stuff. Like this, this is kind of an, uh, this isn't a, a perfect wall, so the Zerglings still might be able to shoot the gap. I don't see Zergling speed being upgraded, however, although that gas was grabbed a little bit later than usual. Let's see if Zergling speed is, yes, Zergling speed is going to be grabbed, uh, 100 grasses there. And Steve moving the Zealots out at the exact wrong time. So Lee Rack able to get a lot of damage on them, not getting any shield damage, so it looks like those Zealots are going to be able to retreat, so a little bit of base damage there on the Southern Zealot. This Zealot still holding Stalwart, as no drones have saturated that natural expansion as of yet. But more Zerglings being produced, a third hatchery being dropped as part of a Sim City on the front. And we have a tech delayer otherwise. Natural expansion being grabbed from Steve Young. No gas as of yet. So maybe just wanting to get it done with Zelts alone. I think this uh, is indicative that Steve typically does not play Protoss overall. Uh, drone, I'm not sure if that was a death or can't, or I think that Zealot must have gotten that kill. I think he snuck out, killed that drone, snuck back. Should awake Lirak to go ahead and draw the Zerglings back to engage. More Zealots now that the Zerglings are pulling back, running out in the field. But honestly, this feels a little bit too bold of Steve, in my opinion. Because, yes, he's got four Zealots, or, yeah, four Zealots total if you count this one. That's going to be behind the lines. But the Zerglings can be produced and in a hurry and get a good surround on the Zealots that are here. Yeah, so getting, well, initial decent surround. So one Zealot, yeah, being taken out summarily. That second Zealot has already had a decent amount of base damage. More drones starting to help saturate this natural expansion. A gas has been grabbed behind this. Nice, decent, well, decent micro from Steve. No additional Zerg. Okay, now the Zergling's being built by Lirak. But that's going to allow one Zealot to go ahead and mix it up. Oh, get out of there, Overlord. So now there's going to be two Zealots in the back lines to create a degree of harassment. A Sunken Colony morphing here at the natural expansion. Natural expansion running pretty well. Steve... Doing okay with this macro here. At 20 drones versus, or sorry, 20 probes versus the uh, 15 drones, which actually is in Lirak's favor overall. That zealot finally being taken out. This zealot with three kills. Really has seen everything, right? Hanging out back there. Additional pylon, still not a full wall here. Additional pylon being dropped, a second cannon as well. Stargate being built. Hydralis Den in construction. If Lirak is going to go for some sort of follow-up 973 stylish bust, doesn't quite have the saturation to do it because that natural expansion still... He hasn't. He doesn't have a third and doesn't have anything else, but Steve keeps throwing troops at him. So, might end up paying off. We'll see. So, the Sunken Colony... Well, let's see what happens here. Some drones produced there. Sunken Colony, are these Zelts going to back right back out? They're getting chased down by the Zerglings a little bit. <clears throat> taking some free damage. This Zealot from the back lines, making a beeline into the main to get the scouting information, does in fact confirm the Hydralis then. But the Stargate's already finished. Citadel of Adun also coming online. Let's see if there's a gateway flood behind this. Plus one weapons being being started. Four Zealots will be out in the field. The Overlord for Lirak should see their movements. A scattering of Zerglings and that something colony should be sufficient to deal with it, depending on engagement point. If the Zerglings engage these Zealots, Heads up midfield like this. The Zealots, well, if they turn and attack, they'll win. Okay, now turning and attacking. and Yeah, should be able to clean these Zerglings up. The Zerglings are going to squeeze through, but taking a lot of damage in between. Now the drones saturating. And Lirak actually ahead in the overall worker count as an evolution chamber helping blockade the front. I don't know if the Zealots really want to test that wall. Third cannon dropped on the front. Two additional gateways from Steve. But Lirak not in, not in a bad position here. He's got the Lair Tech up, he's got the Hydrostun, got Hydra Speed, Evolution Chamber, gonna cancel that, not gonna block himself in, gonna grab a second gas finally. Is uh, in the red, because it looks like that Corsair was able to take out that Overlord near that natural expanse, and Steve trying to see if Lirak grabbed additional bases. <clears throat> Plus one Spines now being upgraded, a slew of Zerglings out on the front. Looks like Overlord Speed also being upgraded. Now the question is, Is are there additional? No, it's just going to be that single Corsair. And that Corsair not really pushing up and doing a lot of scouting here. 
Additional gateway to go up to a four gateway count for Steve. Okay, he does have two Corsair. I just didn't have the track on the second one. The Zerglings testing the front. Able to pick off one Zealot with decent surround. Full control group. I, I believe that is a winning scenario. Those Corsair moving towards the natural expansion are going to be able to see... First of all, they're able to confirm there's nothing at the 12 o'clock, but also we're going to be able to get a good look at the drone saturation at the natural. Macro hatch interior to the base for Lirak, getting that plus one spines and plus one weapons. Right now, so right now, Steve has the supply advantage, but economically, he hasn't moved to grab a third. The drone count's even. Usually that means, so Lirak has a stronger economy right now, but Steve has a theoretical larger army in Zealots, and it looks like he's tacking a lot of them on. He's gonna have Zealots and that Zealot leg speed finishing shortly. Does he have plus one weapons yet? Plus one weapons is just about to finish. So might have a decent timing here to press into Lirak. There's only a single something colony behind this, and it's gonna be Hydralisks and Zerglings trying to engage the Zealots. So depending on Steve's engagement here with the Zealots and with the Corsair, should be able to, well, might be able to take out this base right here. This is a very brave take from Lirak. <clears throat> considering, uh, well, considering current scenarios, so we'll see. Right now, Steve way ahead in supply. Mostly in Zealots. The pile right there. So moving, charging ahead with 10 Zealots. Two more Zealots trailing. Additional Corsair trailing as well. Overlord speed is online. Could help deal with any Dark Templar, but we don't have it. Well, no, there is a Temple Archives. Looks like it's making its way towards Sidestorm behind this. Steve still holding that supply lead. Is pocketed midfield. The Overlord spotting this army. So Lirak now knows that it's out there. It's close, to actually, to being supply cap. The Hydralisks grouping up with the Zerglings. Everything trying to pile. So all of the Overlords, everything trying to escape behind that Sim City to the north. Let's see if that Sim City is going to hold. And yeah, right now, the Zealots getting caught behind that Sim City and not engaging well, not attacking the Evolution Chamber or anything else. So the Hydralisks with the support of the Sim City. So, and actually not a lot of Overlords getting killed behind this either. So the Zealots completely cleaned up. There's still a full control group of Hydralisks otherwise. The Corsair is getting wiped out. Lirak is in the red, but should be able to produce some Overlords pretty rapidly to fill that back in. And his third is established. High Templar out on the front. We have a Robo up yet. So fourth gateway, no movement towards Robo as of yet. I don't see any... I don't know if Lurker Tech has been upgraded behind this or not, but I don't think there's been any movements towards Lurker Tech. The Corsairs are able to push out, but Lirak actually not in a bad position, particularly if he's able to go ahead and get that third base saturated. He's got plus one weapons, making his way to plus two for those Hydralists, and the, whole, the Hydralists holding pretty firm. Pylons out there suggesting Steve wants to make his way towards the third base. Overlord, I think, was able to go ahead and peek in the main to see what was going on there. It looks like there's going to be... So this will be bring the gateway count up to six. High Templar charging forward. Plus one armor being upgraded. Plus one weapons. Well, plus, yeah, plus one weapons already there. Some cannons being warped in to shell in. So both players setting up for more of a macro game. Lirax drones, uh, unfortunately, look like not rallied. Well, okay, so rallied here. They're going to be able to go ahead and rapidly saturate. But as you can see, Lirax economy, pretty solid. If you can just drop a bunch of macro behind it. it. Looks like he is tacking on an additional macro hatch. At this stage, yeah, if he builds overwhelming amounts of Hydralisks, might be able to make something happen, although this is going to be a tough engagement point, particularly with that Psy Storm in between. So, I do want to pause and say, after game one, a false start game one, game two, we are seeing an actual game here, game three, so it's, it's good to see. Two groups of Hydralisks, they're going to be out of position to help defend, well, where are the Overlords? Overlords are piled in around there. The Hydralisks, yeah, finding the cannon is going to draw back. Two of them losing their lives for it. The Corsair is mostly able to confirm just saturation. and my Oh, a bunch of Lurkers morphing there, so it looks like Lurker Tech was online. One Overlord getting picked off. That's going to put Lirak again into the red. Yeah, those Corsairs actually feasting right now. It's forcing a cancellation, actually, of some of those Lurkers. Steve does need to... So it looks like they're being pushed out for more a defensive stance, but honestly, Steve needs to worry a little bit about Lurker Contain, particularly because the robotics facility, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, Lurkers exist. He's just now dropping that Robo here in the background. But he's not going to be able to really pressure Lirak until he has something to deal with the Lurkers. Let's see if he tacks on additional uh, Dragoons. He does have Psystorms to work with. He's got his third up. 
we were, we're still in a decent economic position is tacking on an additional hatchery behind this, giving those additional overlords. That overlord. Well, I was going to say, like, nope, not going to get found. Well, is it? Yes, yes. Well, okay, there you go. Supply counts. About where you'd expect in a uh, standard PvZ. So Corsair, well... Yeah, okay, finally takes that Overlord out. Lirak shelled up. Looks like he's going to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base, bravely expanding into Steve. Dragoons have filter up. Do we have that first observer anywhere nearby? I don't see the observatory anywhere in the base as of yet. So no observatory as of yet, which means, mo well, depending on positioning of the lurkers, the attacks into Lirak's third could be ill-conceived depending on Psystorm, though. Psystorm could equalize things. There's a lot of High Templar out here for Steve. Actually, pretty sizable Death Ball out. He's got the supply lead. The Corsairs have done their work. He's going to go ahead and expand to the 3 o'clock location. Lirak is going to be, a, I believe, be ahead in that. Yeah. It's weird that this feels like it was put so much later in my brain. It should be online already. Not sure why. Anyway, 12 o'clock base is there. Some Lurkers are going to go ahead and block that forward uh, ramp. This ramp more or less blocked off by reinforcements and staging for Lirak in the form of Hydralisks. Overlord going to check out that 9 o'clock location. Maybe stake claim there as well. No movement towards... Sorry, take that back. Hive tech online for Lirak in the background. So can go ahead and get the Defiler Mound. Go ahead and make his way to Ultras. Can do a whole bunch of things. Bunch of cannons getting dropped at that 3 o'clock. So Steve's setting up for a longer style macro game. And this is where, well, things can get scary for Protoss, honestly. In the late game, uh, Lirak actually starting to macro is matched, is even in supply, which usually means Zerg is ahead. Doesn't have that 12 o'clock base saturated as of yet. Hydralisks are moving midfield, looking for an army to engage. Unfortunately for Lirak, he's going to end up engaging this with a smaller attack force. But let's see if Steve, if he is able to bait out some size storms. It looks like Steve is going to hold that size storm. So Hydralisks moving back to the north. Lurker's still here. I don't see an Observer alongside as of yet. Lirak's reinforcement's not engaging. Steve actually peeled off some Dragoons to go to the north. Psystorm blanketing the Lurker to the north. More what, nice Psystorms there from Steve. And it looks like he is going to be... At, well, he's attacking an egg that's morphing, so I'm not sure that's going to be all that beneficial. Observer is taken out as well by that Spore Colony. Additional Storms being dropped. But now... Steve going to GG it right there because of reinforcements from Lirak. Going to be, he doesn't have any detection to deal with the Lurkers. Wasn't going to be able to stop the Mineral only and feeling that he's overall economically behind. So in the best of five, which I presume a best of five, Lirak takes the game. So for the record, Spa's letting me know that Lirak in the background is uh, at his best a 1400 player and Steve is in the 2000 range. So a huge upset, but all of the shame and aspiration or uh, aspersions Dropped on Steve Young here. Everybody can laugh at him and point their finger. But you should give him a follow on Twitch because he's got a really fun stream. That is uh, twitch.tv backslash Steve Young. SE, it's basically how it's spelled here with an SE at the end. And Lirak, you can check him out on Twitch as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fun community match. Thanks for listening.